Hello, it's James Weaver. That's my name. And uh, I'm a happy guy today. Not every day is the same. Sometimes there's a lot of stress going on. I'm doing my best to love everybody. I'm doing my best to keep hope and faith alive and love among us all. Faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest is love, right? And to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. But, you know, nobody's perfect in spirit. Some people, they, they you know, we, we have a mix of flesh and spirit. And so all of us can be a little bit, you know, selfish or a little bit flesh, you know, uh, at times. And so we got to be gracious with each other, don't we? Just a little bit. And, you know, we have the Spirit urging us and Jesus urging us and trying to fill us with his Spirit and his Word. And we need to read the Word so that we can be more spirit and more love instead of more instead of flesh and self. And so uh, I read this scripture to tell you there's a war going on right now and it's in the visible realm, it's the spiritual realm and it's for your soul. And in this little analogy Jesus tells in John 10 about a shepherd and about the sheep and about thieves and robbers, he gets to the culmination and we know exactly who he's talking about when he says this word, these words, uh, and just before it, he says, um, uh, you know, that Jesus said, I'm the door, and anyone who enters by me, he'll be saved, and we'll go in and out and find pasture. That's what we need to find our pasture. We, we're saved, and we need to, to be fed and find pasture to be strong. But then he says something that's definitely spiritual in nature and talks about the, the one that's pushing the flesh and self Satan and talking about God who just the opposite about Jesus and what he gives us which is spirit hope life all of that right so here's what he says and you've heard it but I just want to remind you of it the thief comes to steal and to kill and destroy and Jesus then said I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. You think about the order of those words, steal. What's he going to steal? What, what is he talking about stealing? Well, and spiritually, he's going to steal our faith, isn't he? I mean, isn't that always what he's doing right from the beginning with Adam and Eve? Did he say, didn't he just make Adam and Eve question? Did God really say? You think he really meant that? And you think he's not making people question and lose their faith, lose their hope? by questioning, where is God? How could God allow this? You know, questioning your salvation. Are you really okay? Do you really have peace? Uh, are you going to go to heaven if you're to die? Trying to grip you with fear, because again, spirit brings faith. Flesh brings fear. So he's going to bring fear. You know, you're going to die. You're not going to go to heaven. Remember those things you did? He's going to bring guilt and condemnation and point the accusing finger. He's going to come because he wants to mess with your mind. He wants to drag you down. And with you being able, some of you only watching online, you're going to have to keep doing it. Keep watching online. Keep praying more than ever. Do your devotions because, you know, you remember what it's what, what the Hebrew writer said? He said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, even so much so, as, some, as the custom of some. He said, but even more so when you see the end time signs, because of the pressure. And Jesus said that the love of God that of many people will grow cold because sin is abounding in our world. And we see this happening. And so he's after your faith. That's what he wants to steal. Do you see that? He wants to question you. He wants to make you doubt. He wants to make you feel hopeless. He wants to make you question whether you're really saved, tre tre question whether you've really been forgiven. He wants to keep you under his finger of condemnation and guilt. Don't let him say this. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Do you see that? And we're all tempted in every way. And all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. You sinned, I've sinned. Jesus is the Savior, the forgiver of sin. And he will forgive you, help you. Don't live in that place. Call on him. If you got a question, say, Jesus, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to have faith. Don't let the enemy who comes to steal, what's he going to steal? Your faith, your hope, and put you in despair and fear. And then if he steals your faith, he comes to kill, to steal, 
your bank. Kill. What's he going to kill? Kill you, man. I mean, put knock the knockout punch, right? He, you know, he makes everything look so good on this side of eternity. It's so easy to start living for just today, for what this world can give us, and not remember what I've said a zillion times. Live for the things that money can't buy and death can't take away. Live for the things that are unseen, that are eternal, that last forever. And he, he wants to kill you, I'm telling you. He wants to kill your life. And when you die, then kill, steal, what? Destroy. Where? Not heaven, right? I don't even like saying the word, even though Jesus mentions it several times. He even tells a story about passing down into hell when the guy is so thirsty and it's so hot, right? And that's the devil. He's after you. But run to Jesus every day because he says, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. In the midst of all this, you know, I just did give you some advice. And I'm, I'm not trying to tell you to stick your head in the sand and not be aware of what's going on in the world. I'm not. But you can, you can absorb so much negativity right now through media, so through, you know, news and social media and different places. You, you know, we need to fill ourselves with the good news a little more and maybe that'll help us and keep us more of a cheer and, and, and count your blessings every day. Name them one by one in the midst of whatever's going on. Um, so thank you and I, I wanna pray for you and then I wanna finish after the prayer just with a, with a couple of comments, okay? So Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you put the blood of Christ over every doorpost and we, we come against Satan and all of the demons of hell in the name of Jesus, that every person that's being oppressed, that's being taunted by the enemy, that's being lied to, that that would stop. And we, we, we command in the name of Jesus, there's freedom and that there would be deliverance and that take your hands off of God's people in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of Jesus Christ, we thank you for it, Lord. And we pray for everyone here this, in our church and their friends, other believers elsewhere, whoever's watching. And even if they're not watching, I'm praying for them right now in the name of Jesus. Give them the joy of salvation. Give them the peace that passes all understanding. Pour love in their hearts. Pour gracious spirit in them. Let them be merciful. Let them be kind. And may we all stand up for the truth and do what's right and be sensible and do our very best to live for you, God. But let us not be in despair and let us quit believing the lies of the devil and may we just stand on the truth, what God says. We are redeemed. We are the royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, chosen of God, called out of darkness into his glorious light. We're the children of God, sons and daughters, beloved by the Father, saved by the Son, Jesus. And we thank you for it. Amen. Now, one last thing before, before I go, let me just say, because of your benevolence giving, we are able to help so many people. I can tell you story after story. I'm blown away by it, church. And uh, I just got July's report. I mentioned Sunday that June, we were up over last year. July is up over last year, July. It's blowing my mind, both in missions and ties and in benevolence across the board. Thank you, church. I know if you need help, we want to help you in any way we can. We want to bless you. We don't want you out there alone. Would you please call us? I, 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 it's just so hard month after month just to stay in touch with absolutely every person. And uh, so you help us by sending us a text. Why don't you just send me a text and say, hey, I'm doing okay. Send one of the other pastors. Hey, we're doing good. Report in on us. Why don't you follow up by yourself by just sending a text or an email and telling us we're doing good, we're doing this. Or if you need something, tell us that too, okay? God bless you guys. Keep being a great church. Jesus Christ is coming soon. What did the Lord say to me a few weeks ago? Get right with God, stay right with God, and don't be afraid. Let's continue on with the mission of God that we're put here for. This is temporary and heaven's forever. God bless you. Have a great day.